Science is important for a person of faith for many reasons, but I believe the most important reason is that through science we are exploring God's creation and learning about the many wonderful things that He has made for us. This is echoed in the opening verse of Psalms 19 which reads, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Well, as we learn about His creation, we should keep in mind that one of the reasons it is so wonderful is that God has made the creation in such a way that it reveals His own eternal power and divine nature. It is truly a wonderful thing that He has made, and by learning about His works, we develop a better appreciation of our Father in heaven. For example, through science, we have learned just how big the creation is. The earth itself is big, 25,000 miles in circumference. A healthy person walking 25 miles a day would require three years to walk around the earth just once. Well, although the earth is enormous from our perspective, it is actually small when, comparing, when compared to the other planets in our solar system. Note how big Jupiter is in comparison to the Earth. Jupiter is 11 times the Earth's Earth's diameter, 318 times its volume. But even Jupiter is dwarfed when compared to the Sun. It's about one-tenth the diameter of the Sun. The Sun makes up a shocking 99.8% of the mass of the entire solar system. Well, the sun is itself an enormous fireball, a ball of plasma or charged gas that creates the perfect amount of heat and light for the earth. Well, these reactions, these thermal nuclear reactions that produce this heat and light also produce these enormous explosions called solar flares that grow and erupt continuously, producing an enormous amount of radiation, which itself would be harmful to the earth and the people living in it if our God had not provided us with special protection from it by way of our magnetic field. When we compare the size of one of these solar flares to the earth, we really get a a sense of how big the earth is in comparison. The sun is 109 times the diameter of the earth. 1.3 million earths could fit inside the sun. Well, the sun was perfectly formed and positioned to provide the right amount of light and heat for the earth because according to Isaiah 45, he did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. In addition, a system of planets was formed to serve as signs, according to Genesis. Astronomers have also determined that the planets in our solar system stabilize the distance of the earth from the sun and protect the earth from cosmic collisions. Our space telescopes and spacecrafts have given us some amazing views of these planets shown here that were only visible previously as pinpoints of light. It is truly amazing to live in these times when technology has allowed us to see and investigate parts of God's creation never before seen by human eyes. Truly, God's handiwork has been revealed to us like no other time in the history of the earth. Well, the sun is very small when compared to some other stars. For example, 640 light years away, we find the Orion constellation, which includes an enormous star in the upper right, right there, called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is 1,100 times the diameter of the sun. 1.6 billion suns could fit within Betelgeuse. Well, Betelgeuse is actually a red supergiant. It's one of the largest and most luminous stars known. Our sun is uh, considered a small star, classified as a yellow dwarf. But there are objects even bigger than these stars. Within the Orion constellation, we find the Orion Nebula, which spans 13 light years. Traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, it would take 13 years to get from one side of the Orion Nebula to the other side. Nebula like this one are are dust and gas clouds that result from stars that have exploded or gone supernova. The Eagle Nebula shown here is even more massive than the Orion Nebula. 
It spans 50 by 70 light years across. This little portion of the Eagle Nebula that I've circled for you there is called the Fairy of the Eagle Nebula, which I will blow up for you here. This portion, that little portion called the Fairy of the Eagle Nebula is itself 10 light years tall. It would take you 10 years traveling at the speed of light to get from one side to the other. It is 8.5 million times larger than our solar system. Well, all of these stars and nebula that are visible from our Earth are in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which is shown here above Monument Valley, Utah. That concentration of stars is the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Well, maybe it was a view like this that inspired the prophet Nehemiah who declared, You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the sea and seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. Well, the Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy. This is an artist's conception of what the Milky Way is believed to look like. It's about 100,000 light years in diameter, with about 300 billion stars. Our solar system is positioned right here, about halfway from the center, perfectly positioned between two of its two arms in what is known as the galactic habitable zone. Well, galaxies are themselves massive, massive structures. Some are much larger than our own. In fact, one galaxy can be seen with the naked eye. If you know right where to look, it looks like a fuzzy star. This fuzzy star, when blown up, blown up is a massive galaxy called the Andromeda Galaxy. Andromeda is the nearest large spiral galaxy to our own. More than 220,000 light years across and contains an estimated 1 trillion stars. This picture was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and just released in 2015. It's the highest resolution image of Andromeda that's ever been taken and is shown here to help us better appreciate the enormity of stars that are present within Andromeda. As we continue to zoom into Andromeda, it just reveals more and more and more stars. Well, let's take a look at a few more galaxies. I will just drop further and further back showing a few galaxies. This one's fairly close, 11 million light years away. That's in a small galaxy, only 10,000 light years across. This one's a little further back, 25 million light years away, but a massive galaxy about the size of our own. Dropping a little further back, we're at 30 million light years away now. Now, 46 million light years away, another galaxy. And another galaxy at 50 million light years away. And even further back, 300 million light years away, at this dis these distances, you can actually obtain images, pictures with more than one galaxy in the same picture. Shown also at 30 million light years away is the famous Stevens Quintet. Five galaxies taken in the exact same picture. Well, when NASA aimed the Hubble Space Telescope at a region of space that was believed to contain no astronomical objects, this was an area of space the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. When they trained the Hubble Space Telescope there and left it for two weeks, after two weeks of exposure, they obtained this image. It is the most distant image of the universe ever taken in visible light and estimated to be 13 billion light years away. Every object in this image is a galaxy. And this image contains 10,000 galaxies. Based on this number, extrapolated over the entire night sky, that would mean there are more than 100 billion galaxies in the visible universe, with many more than 100 billion stars each. Well, NASA recently released this new map of the galaxies. A striking outcome of this mapping revealed that the galaxies are not randomly and evenly distributed in the universe. The absence of homogeneity in their distribution lies in stark contrast with the expectations of the Big Bang Theory. Many galaxies, as you can see, are gravitationally bound together to form clusters, which themselves are loosely bound into superclusters, which in turn are sometimes seen to align 
over even larger scale structures. Again, our universe is estimated to be at least 150 billion light years across. Again, containing an estimated 100 billion galaxies with 100 billion stars each. And then consider the word of the psalmist who said, God counts the number of stars. He gives names to all of them. Well, you might ask, why did God create such vastness within the universe? The Bible gives us the answer, to declare his glory and righteousness, and to give us a hint of who our Father really is. Now, let's consider how small the Earth really is in comparison. In 1977, NASA launched the Voyager spacecraft shown here on a mission to explore the gas giants. Well, in 1990, 13 years after its launch, when it was 4 billion miles away, they turned the spacecraft around and took a picture in the direction of the Earth. This picture was taken at the instruction of Carl Sagan, who described the Earth as a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. Well, if you look closely at this image, you might see the Earth. It is that lonely little speck that Carl Sagan described. How is it that so many cannot see what seems to be so obvious to others? Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature are, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. God placed divine attributes within the creation to be a witness. The world seems almost magical in its beauty and perfection. The world, a world like ours simply should not exist within the great enveloping cosmic dark, as Carl Sagan described it. In a universe of cold, empty darkness, we find a world that exists that is perfectly positioned, perfectly equipped with just the right amounts of everything we need. And then let's consider that our Father in Heaven holds not only our world in His hands, but the universe in His hands, constantly sustaining the cosmos, holding the very atoms and fabric of the universe together by the word of His power. And from heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind from His dwelling place. He watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. Then lastly, Consider that God, who can do all this, loves us so much that He sent His only Son to die so that our sins could be forgiven and we could have a relationship with Him. In doing this, defining what it really means to love.